And welcome back to the JKR Podcast. Today I've got the number one player in the 2024 class for Indiana, Alabama baseball commit. I got Nash Wagner on the show today. Nash, I'm super excited to have you on the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm super happy to be here. Hey, thank you, man. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Um, but just to get things started off, every, a question I like to ask everybody, for those who don't know who you are, how would you introduce yourself? Um, I'm Nash Wagner, and I'm just a kid from Indiana trying to make myself known. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> trying so to give everybody watch me a show. Yeah, so let's let's dig into your recruiting process a little bit. You're a sophomore in high school right now, already committed to Alabama. So when did that recruiting process start for you, and when did those D1 teams start reaching out? Um, the first conversation with the D1 program I can remember was IU. And I was going into my eighth grade year. I was at a hitting practice with some of my buddies and my dad was like, hey, you got to come out to the car real quick. And that was when it all really began. And that was when I was 13 years old. And after that, everything just kept rolling in. Yeah. So when you get called out to the car, when you get called out to the car by your dad, uh, was that Jeff Mercer on the phone? It was Dan Held at the time. OK. OK. So what was that conversation like? It was, it was nerve wracking. It wasn't very long. It was only like five minutes or so. It was just an introductory call, just getting to know it. And obviously I was nervous because that was my first call that I had. So, and he, he was totally awesome with it. And Dan's a great guy. And I still talk to him to this day. And um, he just, he helped me through a lot and like gave me advice on everything else. So he kind of helped me um, with my whole recruiting process and just was yeah. a great interview. But, yeah. So after that phone call with the coach, um, was there other, uh, did other schools start rolling in pretty quickly there, like having conversations with you? Oh, after that, about four other schools rolled in, like Duke, Louisville, Michigan, and some others, Pitt, all started to come. And then it kind of took a break because I got injured during that COVID period when COVID first started. And then it really started to pick up after that. And this past summer was when it got really serious for me. I think I talked to a total of, 21 schools and it was it was a great process and I got up to about one time I had seven calls in a day and that was that was a lot for me yeah can I take us through that day you had seven calls How, how'd that go I mean seven calls yeah. is quite a bit with some coaches Friday to to Georgia so when we're at the airport I was calling a school when we landed I was calling a school we we're in the car going to the hotel I was calling the school after the game I called school like it was it was a hectic day yeah. But honestly, looking back on it, it was super fun. It taught me kind of how to manage my time really well because I would have to, I would set alarms five minutes before the call, get prepared on what I was about to say. Yeah. But I'm really thankful for it. And it got crazy, but it was fun. Yeah. So were most of those teams or those Big Ten and SEC schools? Yes. It, it mainly boiled down to um, SEC and ACC okay. and a few and sprinkled in here and there. But I was mainly the SEC. So you said you kept contact with Dan from IU throughout the entire process. So when he kind of moved on, because he's gone from IU, correct? Yes, he's gone. So when yeah. he moved on, um, how did that conversation keep going with him? Um, well, by the time he moved on, I had been talking with Mercer and mainly just Mercer. Okay. But I was every once in a while just because he was a great dude. He was really easy to talk to for me. And he gave me great advice. So, so Bloomington's not that far from you. So did you ever take a visit to Bloomington? I did. When I was, when I just had turned 14, I went down there for a camp and I met with the pitching coach, Justin Parker, who's now at South Carolina, but he was awesome. And I really liked him. And honestly, I thought IU was going to be the place for me when I was younger, but it's just, it's crazy how fast opinions can change in that. Yeah. And like when, when new school and look at it, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to go here. Then you go to the next one and it's the same thing over and over again. But Bloomington was definitely up there for me. And at first I loved it because they had the drive line, They had all the stuff that I really wanted there. But as it went on, I saw like, okay, like the, the finer things, like, okay, maybe I want to go somewhere a little warmer. Maybe I want to go somewhere like where um, like the SEC for me was a huge thing, like the conference that I played in, like I wanted to play the best of the best. Yeah, of course. So, so yeah. you had that first call with uh, the coach at IU your eighth grade year. So when exactly did you get your first offer? My first offer was this uh, spring of 2021. 
and Alabama was my first offer. It was crazy because we went down there during my high school baseball season and I was blown away because Alabama, the campus was there and a the campus was a huge part for me. Not, like not only the conference, but like I'm going to be living there for the majority of my high school, my college career. So that was a huge thing to me, like a place where I could feel at home. And biggest thing for me was go where I was wanted. And obviously they wanted me and they talked to me like, I think Matt rated the assistant coach there. I can't remember a summer game that we had where he wasn't there. Like, even if I wasn't pitching or playing, he was always there. So Alabama made me feel at home and they valued me and they always talked to me and they set up stuff for me. So yeah. it did like, even though they were my first offer, like it still, that stuck with me. Yes. So Alabama SEC school, your first offer from an SEC school. I mean, how crazy is that? Just to know that the best, a school in the best conference in the country is giving you your first offer. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. And obviously I had a ton of people get me there and I couldn't have done it without um, the Bulls and the Moore family. Um, Quinn Moore uh, was great friends with the Alabama head coach and had great connections all around. So he got me in touch with them to start and, Honestly, I can't thank like the people around me who pushed me there. Like it's, it's all them. Yeah. Like behind the scenes, they helped me through everything, but yeah, it was definitely super exciting. And it just kind of started all off for me because the beginning of 2021 uh, season was when it all started to ramp back up for me. Like I was finally healthy again, scouts were coming out and they were the first ones to give me that offer. And it was awesome getting the S SEC because at first when I was younger, I was told like, you're probably going to go big 10 and you're probably going to have to work your way up from there. But getting that SEC offer and being able to play in the best conference with the best competition was crazy for me and just kind of showed me that the hard work's paying off and all the other people who pushed me and helped me get there was, it's crazy. Yeah. So can you kind of take us to that visit you took to Alabama when they made you that offer? Yes. Oh, I went one of my good friends um, in the middle of high school season. And when we went down there, they set up kind of like a camp for me. And it was, it was, it was a camp. I had to pay like $50 or something. They showed me around. And honestly, one of the biggest things for me was the development side because I'm blessed to play at Alabama and I'm going to go there and I'm going to develop, but I want to play beyond that. So and just the way that they develop their kids and like their equipment that they have, because they get a lot of that um, money from football, of course. So the facility, the weight room, the nutrition there is on the next level. And the biggest thing for me was development, because not only am I going to play in the best conference, that's a huge thing for me. But when they showed me their weight room where they feed their kids and not only that on the academic side, like the help that they get their players get is crazy. And it's it just, it's going to be a great experience going there. And when they showed me that they showed me that they care about me too. Like, it's not just all, okay, we're going to work you at baseball and then you can go do your classes. Like they get time for you. They, they understand yeah. things. Yeah. They just made it super at home. Yeah. So with Alabama being your first offer and that's the school you chose, did you get other offers or did you kind of commit like almost right away? Yeah, I got, I got a few other offers. Um, my final three was between Alabama, Clemson, and Vanderbilt. And honestly, what set it apart for me, because Vanderbilt was kind of waiting and everything, is when we went to take a visit to Clemson. And me and Ahmad went together. And Clemson compared to Alabama was crazy. And it just kind of set in perspective. Like the night we got back to the hotel, I was like, to my parents, I sat them down. I'm like, I think I'm going to go to Alabama. Because just compared to another big school like that, Clemson, south part of the United States, like, it was just crazy, the difference. And Clemson's still super nice, don't get me wrong, but Alabama compared to Clemson was crazy. And that was a huge part for me, again, was campus life and, like, where I was going to be staying. So that's what really set it apart for me. Yeah. So you obviously you went to Clemson on a visit. So what other schools did you kind of visit throughout the process? So we went to a lot of just like driving around because we would go everywhere for tournaments. So we would yeah. stop by different colleges. We went to Duke, Wake Forest, Alabama, IU, of course, um, man, Clemson, 
and Vanderbilt. And every place was super nice. And they all had their great qualities, different qualities. Like, I think the craziest thing was when we went to Wake Forest, how different Wake Forest was than I thought it was going to be. It's one entrance, one exit campus enclosed. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool to me. The, the biggest thing for me, honestly, besides the campus was around the campus area and Alabama's in a great town too. And Vanderbilt was a little urban for me and I'm not a huge urban guy, like, and same with Louisville. So I wanted a college town feel and mm -hmm. Alabama blew everybody else out of the water with that. Yeah. So um, obviously you have a good relationship with Ahmad who's going there the same year you are, but do you have any other good relationships with guys who are committed to Alabama currently? Yeah. When we, we went down there this fall for a fall game and I met some dudes down there we went down for football in a inner squad scrimmage Peyton Steele he's a great guy I talked to him a bit um but honestly that's the only guy I really talked to committed in my class yeah. from there I'm super excited to meet him and as um we keep getting more kids committed in that class like it'll be fun to know him and honestly I was one of the first I think it was me Peyton Steele another kid named Ashton we were the first three Alabama commits, and then Ahmad was the fourth. So we didn't have a ton of kids in that class, but now it's building, and there's kids below us even committing in the 2025 class. So this summer, it will be super fun to see those kids because yeah. we'll obviously all be at the same events, and it'll be super fun to just introduce ourselves and watch them play. Yeah, so Always most of those guys who are committed to, the, committed to Alabama in your same grade class, are they going to be in a lot of the tournaments down in Atlanta with you? Yes. Um, going to Grand Park, stuff yeah. like that? Peyton's on a team, Vipers Baseball Club or something like that, and they're really good. They're a top-tier team. So they'll be down there, and, of course, all the other guys will be down there, and we'll be in touch, too. I have all the guys' social media, so we'll obviously meet up and be yeah. watching each other play. Yeah. So you still got two more years before you head to Alabama, head to campus, but what are some of the main things you think you need to work on before you head to the collegiate level? Oh, there's a ton of things that come to mind, and honestly, it's just – for me and a lot of other kids, the velo is what gets you noticed. As a, as a pitcher, like that high 90, 91, and I have that, but my mechanics are obviously need work. Like I can get that high fastball, but my mechanics and my off speed are the main thing that need to get better because I can pitch now and I can be great at 16, but the goal is to be great at 20, 25, yeah. like beyond that. And, um, I work with um, Eric Cressy and I get programs from them for baseball. And that's the same thing Alabama does. So basically I'm always checking in, seeing what I need to do. So I'm on the same page as the Alabama guys. So when I get there, it's not like I'm doing a whole new thing. So I guess what I need to do for me, sorry, my dog is barking like crazy. What I need to do for me is just be ready for what they have and not go into it, not knowing anything like go into it. Okay. They want me to do this exercise. I've done this one before. Like, let me do it and not being totally clueless when it comes to the things that they have me do. Yeah. So what are you throwing right now? Uh, velocity wise. I, I just started up. I was 91 last season and right now I'm in the middle of my ramp up and I'm just doing light intensity, medium intensity bullpens. Cause right now I'm in the middle of basketball season. And one thing Alabama and coach Bohannon's big on is me playing basketball and he's like go be the best basketball player you can be right now let baseball wait because yeah, yeah. They, there's no need to rush anything right now. college coaches they want athletes they don't want just baseball players yeah exactly and I honestly in the middle of maybe quitting basketball this year and just focusing on baseball and I talked to coach Bohannon about that he's like man go play basketball we have staff games all the time and those are like the best part of our week yeah. and I'm like all right I'll do it and he yeah he wants athletes like Obviously, I, I am an athlete, and but basketball just has so many other upsides to it, like just making me like my footwork, my speed and everything. And it's just going to translate over to baseball. So nothing bad can come out of it. So are you are you a football player as well or just basketball? Baseball? Basketball. My mom would never let me play no. football. No. So what are you doing in the fall? Are you focusing more on basketball or uh, baseball? So in the fall, that's a tough time for me because this fall I took off pitching. So it was kind of just getting back into basketball. But normally I'll be throwing in the fall and trying to transition to basketball because our basketball team's pretty good. And like our coach is pretty serious about it. Like Indiana basketball is legit. So 
I got to be ready for that. So it's mainly more geared towards basketball and getting in shape for that and everything. Yeah. So you said you threw 91 last year as a freshman in high school. So when mm-hmm. exactly did you hit that 90 mile power club? That was at the Indiana Bulls scout day. And well, I hit 90, actually I hit 90 in my high school season. So it was my first start on varsity. So I started the year off on JV last year and then got called up to play first base on varsity, but I was also still a pitcher and I would pitch like JV here and there. And then I would pitch some varsity, but it was my first varsity start. We were playing Harrison and in the fifth inning, I hit 90. And that was the first time I hit 90 in game. And then um, after that, I didn't hit it again for a while. I was all 88, 89. And then we went to Bulls Scout Day, which is basically um, a showcase for the Bulls. And I hit 91 that day on the mound. And there were a lot of people there. And I was I was hyped up. I was ready to go. My teammates were giving me velo slaps. And that was the first time I hit 91. So so could you kind of take us through your pitching repertoire? Obviously, you have a fastball. But what are, what are some of those other pitches that you throw? Yeah, so in high school, I was mainly fastball, and I wouldn't even call it a slider. I'd call it more of a slurve. I was fastball, slurve, changeup, and that, those were my main three. And normally for me, my fastball was always on, but it would either be my slurve or my changeup that was looking really good that day. So depending on which one of those it was, I would mainly flip between my fastball or my slurve and my fastball and my changeup. Okay. And then when I got towards summer, when I was working with my pitching coach on just new things, I have pretty big hands for a pitcher, so I was able to throw a pretty good splitter, and I could run that up to 82, 83, and then it would just – the bottom would fall out. So I replaced that for my changeup. So midseason, I had fastball, slurve, splitter, which is kind of an interesting yeah, three. Yeah, a little odd. Yeah. Often. And I think the slurve kind of came from just my arm action. I just naturally cut the ball. So it was mainly a curve ball. And then when I'm cutting it, it would still have that slider motion to it. So those were my main three I went with. And my splitter was pretty good. And that was a standout pitch for me besides my fastball, because not many kids had that. And it was an interesting pitch that you wouldn't expect somebody to throw. So you so say those your splitter's were... your number two? What was that? You would say your splitter's your number two pitch? Yeah. 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 Definitely. So who who would you say some of those toughest hitters to face are? Uh, I got to go with Marucci Elite from Texas. They were – I pitched against them in Lake Point. They were coached by Adam Dunn, um, really good hitter, as you know. And um, I played them down in Lake Point, and it was about 11 o'clock, and this was a huge game for us because they had a kid on the mound named Kassan Evans who's like – I think he's like 13th in the nation or something – Really good pitcher, too, really good. We were both um, 88, 89 the whole night. It, the stands were lined, and it was, a, it was a huge game, great atmosphere. And these kids, I just – I held them pretty well, but they could hit. They, like, I couldn't get anything past them. Like, they were on my fastball, so I really had to locate. Like, normally I can get a fastball in there and then work off my off speed. But that night I was straight sliders. Like, I bet I threw – 70 percent sliders that night because those texas kids could just hit and they were ready for a fastball an 89 fastball they saw that every day so that was nothing new to them then my splitter it was it was dropping a lot but they were ready for it like they knew what it was going to do so i was straight slider that night and my teammates they had a hell of a defensive game like rj cromarty had a diving play um huge out ahmad was crazy in center and we didn't have an error that game. So it wasn't all just me. Like my infield was backing me up because they, they were hitting me. Like it wasn't like I was getting strikeouts for outs. They would yeah. they put barrels on balls. <laughs> so, oh, the best. Based. Yeah. So last year as a fresh, what do you think would be tougher? So last year as a freshman playing varsity baseball in, so, uh, in central Indiana or facing some of the top guys that you're, are your, are your age. Who that's, that's a tough one. Cause Indiana's underrated for their baseball in high school, especially like we got, we play some teams and they can just mash and you don't expect it. Like in sectionals, we had our best pitcher who is at ball state currently. And it was, it just wasn't his day and he got lit up and he was still 92, 94. And so, um, but then again, there are some really good kids we play. And I, I honestly couldn't tell you which one's harder because they're both really hard. Yeah. And especially in that atmosphere with high school baseball, like playing for your community, that puts a lot of pressure on you too. But and then again, playing in front of 
30 scouts is tough too against the best of the best. I think there was one time I pitched one inning in a rehab game or for me rehab inning and we played San Diego show and this UCLA catcher commit came up against me and that was tough the kid was really good I saw him the game before mashing balls and it's just those kind of kids that you see like you might see two of those kind of guys per lineup when you play in the summer and then when you're here in Indiana you'll see like an Ohio State commit IU commit there and it's different a senior and a sophomore are very different players yeah. Yeah. that senior bat that you face in high school he's he's seen 89 for two more years than that other kid has. So it's, they're both extremely hard. I couldn't say which one's harder. I asked, I asked the mod the same thing and he had, he had a tough time answering that one too. I was just, I was just curious what it was facing the top guys at your level compared to, I mean, those grown, those grown men who are 18 years old. So yeah, I wasn't sure, but moving more directly to the Indiana bulls, obviously they're a top tier program. So when exactly did you first get connected with them? After my 13U season, I went and played 14U with the Bulls. So I've been in the Bulls for two years now. I'm going on my third season. But my coach was Rick Steiner, really awesome coach, and he first saw me in 13U. And our group of guys is really, really good. And when I went to that 14U team, we were unstoppable. Like, I think we were eighth in the nation. And then we split up. Half the team went to the Canes. Half the team stayed with the Bulls. But – the biggest thing for me with the Bulls is the Bulls have great connections. And the biggest thing for me was getting seen. And the Bulls do a great job of that. Like, they're top-tier program. They always, they're always getting their kids out there. We're always playing at the best events. They always have – they have great connections. They always have guys coming to see us. So, I think the biggest thing with the Bulls was – that stood out to me was their ability to connect their players with coaches. Yeah. Like – and be honest with their players of where they think they're going to play. And they have great reputations with reputation with coaches because they do that. Like they're honest with them and give honest. So every kid has a fit for them. So it's not like one kid's left out of it. Everybody's talking to somebody, everybody's talking to the coach at their level that they're going to be able to play at. So they do a great job of connecting their kids. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of touched on it there, but obviously the bulls, they have a rich history of great ball players. They've got, I mean, MLB all-stars guys, Heck, winning Lance Lynn winning 20 games. So just you being an insider of the program, what has kind of led to that success? Honestly, it's just the way we compete. Every Bulls team goes out there because everybody pretty much knows the Bulls now, and that's something that people didn't used to know. We're, we've made a great name for ourselves, so people are coming out to watch us now, and I think it's honestly just putting on a show because you got Max. Everybody knows Max. Everybody knows Max plays for the Bulls, and – everybody's coming to see us and they want to see us compete and they want to see that little swag that we have because we're a, we're a competitive team and we always, we always show it. So whenever somebody comes to watch us, they're not disappointed Yeah, because we're, all, we're always going to put it all out on the field and give everybody a great show. Yeah. So out of all your Bulls teammates that are on that 2024 class, uh, 2024 team, who are some of the guys you think who's kind of flown under the radar so far in their career? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Brayton Thomas. Great guy. He's going to IU, so he has far under the radar, but he's going to be a dude one day because he can spin it for a lefty, and he's he's right. He's three fours from the left side, like that's hard to hit. And then um, Griffin Tobias, another IU guy, so super far under the radar, but he's a dude. Great two way potential, and like you just don't know what he's going to like. He could be a great pitcher, or he could be a great shortstop. That's the best part about him. And then Jace Jace Lee is. A really good, great right-handed swing, and he's got a cannon for an arm. And I honestly think this is going to be his breakout season, and I can't wait to see what he does. Awesome! I can't wait. To, I can't wait to go watch you guys play this year, man. There's one, Simon Wilkinson. He's he's a Zionsville guy too, so I play with him a lot. But the amount of um, growth he's had is incredible. He was um, 84 top in 84 last year, the very end of the season. And he's already up to 89. And he's a dude who's flown under the radar like crazy. 6'1", built kid, yeah. great work. Like, he's going to he's gonna be able to go anywhere he wants if he keeps it up. So so you mentioned Griffin Tobias as a potential two-way player. Obviously, you play first base too. Are you think you're going to be playing first base in Alabama at all? You're just going to be focusing on pitching. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I, I don't think I will, sadly. No. But 
for um, high school, I think I'll definitely be a two way all through my high school career. And then um, travel ball with the Bulls. Like, obviously, if they need me here to play a position, I'm going to be there. Yeah. But my main focus in the summer is getting seen for pitching because mm-hmm. it's kind of transitioning over from getting seen by colleges to getting seen by MLB scouts and other people who can um, help me get to that next level. Yeah. So when you're not pitching for Zionsville, you do you play first base every game or do you DH as well? Yeah, pretty much. Last year, um, about halfway through the season, I got called up to play first base on varsity. And when I didn't pitch, because I didn't pitch a ton on varsity last year, because we had dudes, like we have Drew Dixon, who's going to Northwestern, craziest curveball I've ever seen in my life. Like I can't even catch it when I play catch with him. And then Nate Dome, who's at Ball State now. So we had pitch and filled up. So we were really good on that. So I played mainly first base. And that'll probably be the same this year, too, I would assume. And then... I probably won't DH a ton. Like if I'm not playing first, I'll probably won't play and other kids will get to play. So I get rest and everybody else gets rest and everybody gets their chances. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, you've got, you said Drew Dixon, uh, <laughs> Nate, what Dom? He's at balls. Okay. He was last yeah. year. Those, those are both names that I've seen in the past. So how is Zionsville producing all this top level pitching talent? It's, part of it is the Bulls and Quinn Moore and Jared Moore both live in Zionsville. So, they have a great reputation yeah. and they know what they're doing when it comes to coaching. And honestly, like we just have great talent here and we have a great feeder systems, Zionsville baseball club, which yeah. mainly every kid that's like on the bulls now, like me, Simon, and a few other, my buddies that are all in the bulls organization started there. So we have a really good feeder system and we just do a really good job of connecting kids and keeping them in Zionsville and getting them into baseball and we just have a lot of kids that like to work hard yeah and get there determined yeah um so um when i was talking with max he was telling me about the indiana bulls national team that the 2023 mm-hmm. class is starting mm-hmm. but he also said the 2024 class is going to have a national team next year yeah so are you kind of excited for that what do you what are you uh, looking forward to for really, that? that i think that'll be an awesome time and we'll be we'll expand because we're already really known and Max is helping that out a lot because he's he's a big image and he's getting kids to that 2023 national team. And hopefully kids are seeing that and they're like, all right, I want to play on the Bulls next year. So they're going to come to our team and we're going to be we're going to be a team. We're we're already a team this year. Like we're going to be hard to stop. But next year, when we get on that national level, when we start getting kids from like Texas, Florida, even maybe even California, like who knows what we'll be yeah. like. And, I'll be crazy. Yeah. So I kind of want to transition a little bit. Obviously, before we started the interview, I told you I'm trying to be an MLB uh, certified agent here after I graduate from IU. So obviously, I like seeing like the player side of things, how they chose their advisor, how their advisor reached out. Um, so I kind of want to see how how did your relationship start with your advisor and how did they reach out to you? Yeah. So my advisor or people he works with, uh, Jay Lair, and he's my pitching coach. So I already had a great relationship with him. And then once he saw my potential kind of, then he started reaching out. And honestly, I didn't know anything about this process and they helped me through it. Him and, uh, Chris Lamovis and the headline sports group, uh, agency, and they have great guys. They have Lance Lynn and Carlos Rodon. So they're definitely credible. And the biggest thing to me was they wanted the best for me. And I personally knew them and I didn't know all these other people coming at me or anything. And the biggest thing for me is I knew them and I knew that they had my best interest in mind and I knew they were going to help me. And it was my coach too. So I knew he was giving me the right info. Yeah. yeah. So who are some of those other guys that kind of reach out to you throughout that process? Um, personally, I don't know a ton. My dad kind of handled that yeah. side. He didn't want to get me totally wrapped up in that, but he did tell me about, um, the headline sports group with my pitching coach because I was um, yeah. close to home and everything. He he kind of helped me with that decision. He's like, I honestly don't know. He didn't know anything about it either. So he was getting questions answered. And he's like, I think this is the best fit for us. Like these other guys, they're national. They're good. They have good reputations, but we know these people. So let's stick with them. Yeah. So it's kind of no brainer for you guys, just having a personal relationship with those mm-hmm. guys. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I got a few more questions for you before we end off the podcast. Obviously we've been talking a lot about baseball. So let's kind of move mm-hmm. on from that. So what are some of your passions beyond the field? Man, I like, I love hanging out with my buddies. I got a good group of four friends out. They're always over here. We're always hanging out together. We're always working out. And honestly, our hobbies getting better. Like we're always pushing each other. Like if we have an off weekend, we're going and doing live babies. Like, or we're going to the basketball court and playing some two on two. And other than that, I like fishing. 
a little bit. I have a pond in my backyard, so I'm out there sometimes. But yeah, I just like getting better. Like that's like when I'm not doing that, like I'll be doing like driver's ed or something at home. You're not you're not even driving yet. I'm not even driving yet. I I started late on driver's ed, so I am supposed to get my license February 18th or not February 18th, April 18th. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't, I I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize that, but yeah, uh, you got a, you got a pond in your backyard. So you, what, you live on a farm or something like that? Yeah, we live kind of in the countryside of Indiana or in Zionsville. And so we have a barn in the backyard and I have a batting cage in there and workout equipment. And then we have a pond in our backyard. So that's okay. nice. A lot of room. For- yeah. So besides getting better and fishing in your pond, is there some other stuff you like doing in your hometown of Zionsville? Yeah, we have, um, I like biking around with my friends because in the summertime, that's fun. Even when we have cars and everything, we'll still go out for a bike ride and that's super fun. And we have, um, there's like a hill in our town. So we'll go over there. There's a big field. We'll play like spike ball or something. Just be kids, honestly. And like, there's a creek. We'll go swim in it sometimes. My friend has a pool, so we'll go swim over there. So just being kids other than that, but like, when we are biking around, we're going to the hill around hill sprints too. So like we, we don't have much other to do here. Honestly, we're either playing 2k Fortnite inside or we're out biking trying to go do some hill sprints or run some sprints on the football field or something like that. Yeah. So um, obviously, like I said earlier, you two years before you uh, get to the Alabama campus, um, the new NIL regulations came out this past July. Have you put any thought into like, Oh, like a dream brand that you'd like to work with at some point? And I, um, I'll work with anybody honestly I'm super excited for that and that's honestly been a huge thing for me because I'm trying to um, expand myself on social media obviously to get my following up so I have more companies reach out to me but I am excited for that yeah Yeah, that's what what I love to hear like I said with me trying to be an MLB agent uh, helping players build their brands I love it when uh, younger guys are just trying to build their brand um, help their marketing stuff like that but Mm -hmm. Ash I think that's all I got for you I, I'm super excited to watch you guys play this year. Maybe I'll make it up to Zionsville we'll watch a game, but I'll definitely be watching the Indiana Bulls this year. Go see you, RJ, Ahmad, Braden, uh, Tom, Thomas. I've been I've built a relationship with him a little bit, so I'm excited to watch him pitch as well. But yeah. I'm super excited to see where your career goes. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. I'm very thankful that you had me. It was a privilege. Of course. Like I said, um, this summer, I'm going to try and uh, set up that roundtable interview with you, Ahmad. RJ, Braden, just some other guys from the 2024 Bulls. Mm-hmm. Um, in the fall, like I said, I want to set up that live AB stuff. Uh, I've got yeah. Braden committed to doing that already. So I'm, mm-hmm. excited. I'm excited to have him come in. Got Max Clark, Matt Santana, uh, Brandon Logan from Fort Wayne. He's, he's a dude. He is. Yeah. Um, I've got a buddy trying to convince Landon Fry. He's committed to IU. Okay. Yeah. Um, just, I'm, try, I'm trying to reach out to a few guys, just get some live AV content, do something similar to what Trevor Bauer does, just to yeah. maybe just have some content to put out there. But Yeah, I'm sounds excited. great. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. Yep. Thank you for having me.